I want to give God thanks this morning and give God also thanks for our pastors, beginning for, from our bishop, Dr. Jimmy Kimani, and our mom, Reverend Beatrice, my brother, Pastor Brian, the rest of the great ministers that are seated in the church today. May God bless you, and may God, you do, uh, may God do you good. Amen. Amen. Thanks for everyone that has come today, uh, so that we may fellowship together and enjoy God's presence in this place. I want us today to look at something which God has been placing in my heart. So I want you today to relax so that we may interact together with you, even as we fellowship together in God's word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house? Are you glad to be in this place? Amen. <clears throat> so I want us to look at a topic I have entitled, God has need of you. God has need of you. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them, God has need of you. Now, point a finger to them and tell them, God has need of you. It's very important for us to understand that the Lord God has need of every one of us that is seated in this place. And even they that are outside that, they do, uh, that do not know God, God has need of them. Now, wells are dark for a purpose. No one digs wells as sport or show-offs. There is always a need to meet a people around for their needs to be met. Now, in this year of predicting and repossessing the wells of our fathers, I want us to understand that principle that wells are dark for a purpose. We redeek wells because there is a need for those wells to meet. There is a need for us that we need to meet through those wells. Now, you as an individual represents a well. It's very important for you to understand now as we come close home that you as an individual, you represent a well. Your family represents a well. We as a church, we represent a well. In other words, you, when somebody comes to you, they need to draw something from you. When somebody comes to your family, they need to draw something from you. When somebody comes to us as a church, they need to draw something that will meet their need in their lives. Now, you are to give refreshing waters to yourself. You are to give refreshing waters to your family. You are to give refreshing waters to anyone around you. This is very important, brethren, that we are supposed, you as an individual, you are supposed to give. We as a group or a collective body of Christ, we need to give refreshing waters to anyone that comes to us or to anyone that is around us. Now, you are either a wellspring of life or a dry well. Now, that is a bad thing, a bad statement, but we need to chew it this morning so that we may do a reflection of our lives and see, am I really a refreshing, a well of refreshing water or I am a dry well? You are either overflowing with the life of God to others or you are stagnant. And anything stagnant always produces a bad smell. Anything stagnant. When you walk around, maybe around your home or around uh, the neighborhood and you find waters that have stayed there for a long time. A pool of water that is there, actually it has turned green. And it's, not, it's full of mosquitoes and all those kind of things. You will find that even frogs will be hard to be found there because frogs need where there is life, where there is life. So you will find out that that place produces a bad smell. I pray this morning 
that every one of us, we will be wells of living waters. We will be overflowing with refreshing waters that anyone that comes near us, they will not experience a bad odor, but they will experience the aroma of God, the aroma of life, the aroma of peace, the aroma of grace, the aroma of glory. Anyone that hears us speak, they will find there is a refreshing living water overflowing through us. Hallelujah. Now, why God saved you is because he has need of you. Why you came to church today is because God has need of you. You are not here by mistake. You are not here by accident. There is something fallible in you. You are fallible to God. Come on, touch yourself and say, I am fallible to God. Please, we value you so much. You may be coming from a background where people don't value you. But I want you to understand that when you come in church, when you came to Jesus, he values you so much. That's why he gave his only son. The Lord God gave his only son so that he may die and bring you into his family because he values you. Praise the Lord. And we value you. Come on, tell your neighbor, I value you. Now, don't look at the hairstyle they have or the clothes they have put on. I want you to tell them, I value you. You know, sometimes the world gives us the interpretation that we used to interpret for other people around us. But I want us who are believers in Christ to interpret everyone around us and after the image of Christ. We interpret them in the picture of the blood of Jesus Christ. We interpret them as the image and the likeness of God. We interpret them as a people that are fallible to God. Tell your neighbor again, I value you. you. Hallelujah. Yeah, your boss may not following you. They may be thinking of other things. But today I pray that you understand that God values you. And here as a church, we value you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's very important. Now, God has called us to be a wellspring flowing on a and giving life to wherever we flow. We are flowing on. We are not staying there. He has called us to be flowing on. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's very important. Because he hasn't called us to stagnate. He desires to move forward. To excel. To advance in him. The Lord God wants us to advance in him. He wants us to excel in him. We move on. We are not stagnating at one place. Now for us to advance, we need to be moving. Praise the Lord. For us to advance, we need to be moving. We are not stagnating, but we are moving. Now for us to move on rightly, we need to understand life before the cross and life after or beyond the cross. Because God is calling us to go beyond. Praise the Lord. Life before the cross and life after the cross or beyond the cross. This is very important. I want you to capture something today so that God helps us to revolutionize our lives. Because when you look ahead of us, in front of us, there is a cross. Now, all of us with the buckets of sin, God calls us to come to him. Now, we come at the cross. So, we need to understand our life before the cross. Then when we come to the encounter of the cross, then we need not to just feel good at the cross, stay there, but we need to realize that God is calling us to a life after the cross, beyond the cross, so that we may move on with him. Praise the Lord. Now, in a while, I'll be explaining a few things so that we understand what I'm pointing us to. 
The cross has two places, before and beyond. Please, brethren, understand that. The cross has two places, before and beyond. Now, besides or next to the cross is the grave. Beside or next to the cross, there is the grave. Now, I want you to get this. Coming to the cross is a wonderful thing. But staying at the cross is a wrong choice. Okay, let me mess a little bit with your theology so that you get what we are saying. Coming to the cross, we are coming as sinners. Carrying heavy buckets of sin, of death. Of hopelessness is a wonderful thing. But staying at the cross is a wrong choice. Praise the Lord. Remaining at the cross makes us lifeless monuments. It makes us lifeless monuments. When we choose to remain at the cross, we become lifeless monuments are people bearing only the name minus the power just like a fragrant bottle without the fragrance i don't know if maybe you forgot to go to the supermarket to buy some spray for yourself or some cologne for yourself and you thought you had it in the house and now you are going for a very important meeting and it's sunny, it's hot. You know it will be sunny, it will be hot. So you will sweat. So you needed to minimize that sweat by applying some cologne upon yourself. But you go, you find an empty bottle. You try to squeeze it, you try to shake it, but it's dry as dry can be. That's what we are saying. Remaining at the cross makes us lifeless monuments. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to look at the scripture now. <laughs> okay. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Hebrews 6, 1 to 3. So that we understand a few things from this scripture. The Bible says, therefore, let us move forward. Uh, uh, we are looking at NIV. We will look at uh, New Living Translation. We will also look at the Amplified Version. But I want us to read together. Tell your neighbor we are using our school fees. Amen. We are using our school fees by reading in the church. Come on, let's read together what the scripture says. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. Let's go on. Instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Verse 3, and God permitting, we will do so. Now, I want us to look at what the scripture says in New Living Translation. New Living Translation, what it says. Hallelujah. Come on, we are using our school fees to profit ourselves. Amen. Come on, let's go. So, let us stop going over the basic teachings. Aha. Uh -huh. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding, surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. First three, first two, you don't need further instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. First three, and so God willing, we will move forward to further understanding. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at amplified fashion. The amplified fashion.
Come on, let's go. Number one, therefore, let us get past the elementary stage in the teachings about the Christ, advancing on to maturity and perfection and spiritual completeness. Doing this without laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of teaching. Aha. Uh -huh. The laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. These are all important matters in which you should have been proficient long ago. And we will do this. That is... Aha! Uh -huh. That's what we want to do. Proceeding. That's where God is calling us. Praise the Lord. So the apostle here is bringing to us something very important that we need to understand about life before the cross and life at the cross then life after the cross. He's bringing us to understand these things. And therefore, he tells us that we need to move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ. Things about repentance from dead works. Things about baptisms. Laying on of hands. He's looking at them. He's saying those are elementary things. Those are basic things. And the amplified fashion tells us very well that these are all important matters in which you should have been proficient long ago. You need to have been proficient in them long ago. So that we press now on, we move on. Now I have come to realize that even we preachers, God has to liberate us from life bef after, uh, before the cross. So that we move on to life after the cross. So that whatsoever we teach is life after the cross. Everything we do is life after the cross. Praise the Lord. It's very important. So let's look at a few things here. A few things. Life before the cross. Life before the cross. And we are looking at this side of the cross. Life before the cross. At this side of the cross... We are dead in our trespasses and sins. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5 tells us that, And you all, and you he made alive. Ephesians, we are looking at the New King James Version. And you he made alive who are dead in trespasses and sins. We were dead in our trespasses and sins on this other side in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Verse 3 tells us, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. So we are told life on this other side. All of us, we were dead in our sins and in our trespasses. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. Life before the, or before the cross, we follow the passions and desires of our evil nature. And so we were under God's wrath. Because the scripture tells us in Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death. So we were children of wrath. A life before the cross is a life of fear and terror. We fear death. We dread judgment. How will I stand before God? As vile sinner as I am. Life before the cross. It's a life of hopelessness. 
Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 tells us that at that time you are without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Life with, before the cross is a life of hopelessness. We were dead. We are just waiting eternal destruction. But the good news is this. But Christ came to rescue us. Tell your neighbor Christ came to rescue us. It's very important, brethren, for us to understand this. That God didn't leave us on this side, but he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to come. And he died on the rugged cross. Bearing our sin, bearing our shame, so that anyone that comes to him, the way he calls anyone and he says, come unto me, O ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So we come to him with our buckets, we come to him with our burdens, we come to him full of everything we can collect from the world. We come to him on the cross and we lay them at the cross of Jesus. He came to rescue us. He came to give us his life, the Zoe life, the life in abundance, the everlasting life. And the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that if anyone be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. So therefore, at the cross now, we are crossing over, we are becoming a new creation. Praise the Lord. At the cross. At the cross. Let's look briefly at the cross. What happens at the cross? What happens on the cross? Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Come on, we are reading together so that we get it. Come on, let's read it together. But God... Now some people are not reading. They have let us down. And we told our, ourselves that we need to use our school face. Come on, let's read together. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, with which he loved us, did what? Even when we were dead. Aha. Uh -huh. He made us alive together with Christ. Oh, we thank the Lord for his grace and his love. God who is gracious, who is merciful, the Lord God who is so loving, he didn't leave us before the cross on this other side. But he showed us his mercy, his love, and saved us. Praise the Lord. That's why salvation is very important. It's a key thing. Now, that salvation is bathing us into something. It's just bathing us into a life now that we move on with God. Praise the Lord. So at the cross, we experience God's mercies and love. We experience God's mercies and love. At the cross, God gives us life. His Zoe life, as I have said. And this life is demonstrated by God raising Christ from the death. Now, at the cross, we experience a new beginning. At the cross, we experience a new beginning. Of a journey of relationship with our God and our Heavenly Father. We experience a new beginning. It's a new beginning at the cross. Now, Christ is not on the cross. Do we agree that? Christ is not at the cross. He's not on the cross. The Roman soldiers made sure... He doesn't sleep on the cross. <laughs> the Pharisees and all the priests that of that day, 
They made sure he doesn't sleep on the cross. He needs, if he's not dead, to be killed so that they have their Passover day, the following day, without any disturbance. So they made sure he is not on the cross. So us, we need also to realize that my Jesus is not on the cross. Praise the Lord. Neither is he in, on, in the grave. Because we say beside the cross, there is a grave. He's not in the grave. Praise the Lord. So when we begin to realize this, then we begin to see where is he. Praise the Lord. Now, where is he? Because without understanding now where he is, we will remain on the cross. We will remain there and begin to lament, begin to whine, begin to just center ourselves on the issues of the cross. Yet Jesus is calling us to a life beyond the cross. Praise the Lord. He is risen and at the right hand of God the Father. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 tells us, Ephesians 2 verse 6, it says, and raised us together. Come on, let's read together so that we get it. And Aha. Uh -huh. Brethren, God raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the grave. And he did it with us. He raised us together with him. So you are not at the cross. You are not in the grave. You are risen together with Christ. And you are seated spiritually somewhere with him. Praise the Lord. You are raised together with Christ. That's what the scripture is telling us. Now at the cross we received forgiveness of sins. Freedom from sin and Satan. Our old is gone and buried. And the new life in Christ begins. We received a new master. Jesus the Christ. Who is not on the cross or in the grave. But he is the way and the truth and the life. Leading us past the cross to the Father. Praise the Lord. We are made into a kingdom of priests at the cross. A, a royal priesthood. God's sons and daughters. Our citizenship is changed. Praise the Lord. We are given a new language, a heavenly one, and can access everything that God has because of experiencing the cross. Praise the Lord. So I want us quickly to look at life beyond the cross. Because we say Christ is calling us to a life beyond the cross. So life beyond the cross our life begins at the foot of the cross, but it doesn't stop there. Because we aren't meant to stay at the foot of the cross. There is life beyond the cross where our master and savior is calling us. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's why when you get saved, people want to see they want to see something. Yeah. You confess, you say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I repent my sins. But they want to see now something beyond that. A life with Christ. A life that is consistent in the things of God. A life that is growing and becoming fruitful each day. A life that is portraying the character of Christ. A life 
of a living believer who is not at the cross or in the grave. Because at the cross, you have to die. But now when you are alive, you will say, as Paul in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, but I live. And I'm not the one who is living, but it's Christ who is living in me. So the life I'm living is to please the one who died for me. So when we do Holy Communion, it's like we are looking at the side mirrors of a car. And they always make them to be small. That's why Christ said, do this in my remembrance before I come. So we are doing it, we are looking. You don't look at the side mirrors all the time. You don't concentrate just on side mirrors that are showing you behind where the cross is. But you look at them as you are moving forward. Because you are looking at the big picture. Praise the Lord. It's very important for us to get this. So life beyond the cross is a resurrection life. Uh, tell your neighbor I'm living a resurrection life. Please, we have to live this resurrection life. Yeah. We have to live a resurrection life. Romans chapter 8, verses 10. Let's look at it up to verses 11 and see what it says. Romans 8, 10 to 11, New King James. Thank you. That, come on, let's read together and see what the scripture says. It says, and this Christ is in you. The body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of? Come on, let's continue. Verses 11. But if the spirit of him. Come on. Aha. Uh -huh. He will. Aha. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Verses 11. Oh, that is verses 11. Okay, it says. But if the spirit of him. Who raised Jesus dwells in you. He will do what? He will raise, uh, he who raised Christ from the dead will do what? Will also give life to your mortal bodies. That's why Paul says, The life I live in the flesh is for the glory of the one that gave me that life, that gave his life on the cross. So he's living in the flesh the life of Christ. The resurrection life. I pray from today that every one of us, we will begin to live that resurrection life. Praise the Lord. The life beyond the cross is a resurrected life. A life of resurrection. Now you can read Romans chapter 6 from 1 to 11. It talks concerning all that. Life beyond the cross is a believer on assignment. You are on assignment. Praise the Lord. They understand they are dead to sin and dead to the world and alive for God. Life beyond the cross. It's a life where we understand we are dead to sin. I can't do some things which I used to do on this other side of the cross because I am dead to sin. And I'm, I'm now alive in Christ. Praise the Lord. The cross has worked on me. The old man of sin is dead. Now I am alive in Christ, moving on to the things of God. Life beyond the cross, there a believer is filled with the Holy Spirit and God's Spirit is upon them, leading them on in doing God's work. You know, when Christ died, and he resurrected. He told the disciples to do what? 
to wait for their promise. Now, they waited for almost 50 days for the promise of the Holy Spirit to come after resurrection. Now, they were not waiting on this other side because they had believed on him. And the scripture has told us that if we believe on him, he raises us up. He gives us life, then he raises us up. Now, what happens is they were waiting as they were moving on. Now, if you can't stay at somewhere 50 days, just somewhere 50 days. Okay, you are on bed 50 days. Even part of your body, they will need some therapy for them to move. 50 days. So they were waiting. These guys are in the upper room. They are praying. They are waiting. They are moving on. They want to move on. Actually, they wanted to move on. That's why he told them, wait for the promise of the Father. Wait. Because when he comes, that's when you will move. Rightly. Praise the Lord. So, they were entued with the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God led them on into doing God's work. So that's why we are saying life beyond the cross. It's a life where we as believers, we are filled with the Holy Spirit and God's Spirit is upon us, leading us on in doing His work. Wherever we are, praise the Lord. Now, God has need of us on the other side beyond the cross. Because that's where he is. He has need of us on the other side. Don't remain at the foot of the cross. Move on to where he is. Tell your neighbor, move on. We need to move on. Now, moving, moving on in Christ makes us mature in the things of God. Moving on in Christ makes us mature in the things of God. Now, anyone among us, I know maybe you have heard somebody say, that person, I thought they are mature, but they are They say they are anaongea kama mtoto kabisa. Ama ana, mambo yenye anafanya ni kama mtoto. Na yet ni mtu mkubwa. <laughs> Mesha waisikia kitu kama yo? Yeah. <laughs> so moving on in Christ makes us mature in the things of God. Moving on in Christ will make us able to feed on the meat of the word. It will make us able to feed on the meat of the word. There, there is what the scripture says, the meat of the word. Yeah. <laughs> yani, siyo kupombelezwa. Sasa hiyo siyo kupombelezwa. Ni mifupa. Unafunzwa mpaka kiti kinakuwa moto. Unamuka. Bwana Yesu sifiwe. Now, if us as a church, we will abide at the cross or on this other side, we remain spiritual babies. Now, we will make our pastors never to teach us spiritual, give us spiritual meat of the word. Wakija wanaona tu, uyu anataka maziwa. Because the way we behave, in our nyesha, to may grow kimwili, lakini, spiritually, to combine mbovu, watoto. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. Okay. Moving on in Christ will make us fruitful in all godliness in the things of God. It will make us fruitful in all godliness in the things of God. Now, I want you to mark these two things. Number one, 
There are things to live. Kuna vitu za kuacha. Amen. There are things we need to live. Mark these two things. In other words, we need to cease to remain in the stage of babes. Tell your neighbor, achana na mnyonyi. Yeah, we need to leave those things, diapers, and being carried, and being spoon-fed, and, and, and porridge. You know, all those things are for small babies, yeah? Porridge, yeah. Prayerlessness. We are looking at going to church when you feel like that. Today, I feel like going to church. That's when you appear. The other Sunday, you don't feel like, I don't feel like. I feel like today to read the Bible. You read. But when you don't feel like it can stay for three months. No opening, no nothing. I feel like today doing this. You are behaving as a spiritual child. Spiritual baby. So you wonders when you come to church to nakupombeleza. Kujeni tu, kujeni tu. Kujeni please. <laughs> Bwana sifiwe. Okay. Tutakupombeleza, but you need to grow up. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So one leg in the church and the other in traditions of the world. Picking offense when corrected. Tell your neighbor, nani, grow up. Yeah, tell them grow up. Amen? You know, one important thing that makes us grow is when you receive corrections and you don't pick offense. Tunakuwa corrected. Now some corrections are very harsh. Lakini, when I smile, tunasema, thank you for helping me. Lakini mwingine akiwa corrected. Anasema, unafikiria hiyo ndiyo church peke yake? Kwanza nyinyi, nyinyi, alafu amebeba back, ameenda. Hawezi onekana church. Afanyiwe fall up, afanyiwe fall up, mchungaji aende, ara bishop anataka kuenda. Lakini yeye anasema, iyo church siwezi rudi tena. <laughs> Spiritual babies. Amen? Amen? Grow up. Number two thing, go on to perfection. Go on to perfection. You know, there are things we need to be doing now. And that's what now we are saying, we go on to perfection. When we look in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 12 to 14, this is what the scripture says in Hebrews 12. Uh, 5, 12 to 14, it says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. In other words, you need milk, not solid food. Then he continues in verse 13. He says, For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled. Killed in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Then verses 14 says, But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Praise the Lord. So God wants us to be doing some things. To be doing some things. We have left some things. And now we are moving on to do some things. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are moving on to do something else. Yeah. Somebody said long ago. That nature upholds. Fuck you. So you can't leave something. And you just. Are not doing anything. You have to be doing something. Praise the Lord. 
and God calls us to do something. So beyond the cross, we become aware that it depends on me what happens in my life. It depends on me what happens in my family. It depends on me what happens in my church. It depends on me what happens at my workplace. We become aware of that. In other words, we become responsible. We want God to move in our church. It is simple. I am responsible. Tell your neighbor, I am responsible. It's very important. You think pastor is responsible? You think bishop is responsible? No, you are responsible. Life beyond the cross. It teaches us to be responsible. I will go to church. I will pray till God does miracles in our church. I will pray for my pastors till they preach the unalterated word of God. Powerfully under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I am responsible. But a child will always say, Leo church, imekauka. Leo church, uh, 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 uh. Leo church, leo service because of not being responsible. Praise the Lord. Are we together, somebody? So you can't lazy around beyond the cross. You can't lazy around beyond the cross. The <laughs> you, 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 you realize I am a soldier and no soldier lazes around. You realize I'm a soldier. Kuna wa pepos in a sumbua watu. Okay. I'm an ongea kama wa ubiri wa kutoa ma pepo. Yeah. Kuna wa pepos in a sumbua watu, kazini, nyumbani, popote, penye wapo, hawa. I want a breakthrough. I love me, I want to church. I want to leader of prayers. I want to for this service, God to do something, for the miracles to happen. I want to make to I am responsible for miracles not happening if I am on this side of the cross. I am responsible. But if I want God to move, ah, I will pray. God move, stretch your arm and your arm and heal, deliver, save, do amazing things. How can we stay as a church? People are not getting saved here. The pastor is calling for an altar call, and no one is coming to get saved. Tell your neighbor I am responsible. Uh, you look at them, tell them I am responsible. Praise the Lord. Beyond the cross. So let me wrap off <laughs> by sharing just one thing, I think. Okay. So moving beyond the cross, number one. For us to move beyond the cross, number one, our language must change. Our language must change. When we operate in the resurrection power, our language changes. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you got to see yourself as God sees you. You are not a grasshopper, but you are mighty in God. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's own special people, as Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9. You are seeing yourself as a more than a conqueror person. You are not saying, I am weak, but you are saying, I can do all things according to Christ who strengthens me. You are seeing yourself, you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Life beyond the cross. In other words, we are saying your language changes. I am not weak. Amen. You know, the scripture says that greater is he that is in me. Our language has 
to change. We are seeing God is in me and he is greater than he that is in the world. So I can't come here, even for those who lead us in singing. Please don't lead us in the songs on this other side. Lead us on the songs of this power, on this side. The songs of power, onward soldiers, marching on. Praise the Lord. Yeah, because when we begin to sing, yeah, we are useless. We are what on this other side. We are still on this other side. But we need to realize Christ is in our midst and he is mighty. He is greater. We look at him like that because he is leading us on. And by the way he promises, he says he will never leave us. So why are we singing again? Thinking he is leaving us. He is not, he is, hasn't signed any contract to leave us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, <clears throat> you got to think yourself with godly thoughts. You got to speak the language of God. Philippians 3.20, the scripture tells us that for our citizenship or our conversation is in heaven. But we are citizens, according to New Living Translation, of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. So our citizenship is in heaven and we talk the heavenly language. Praise the Lord. We talk the heavenly language. Praise the Lord. Are we together, church? Philippians 4.13, I said it earlier on, what it says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. 1 John 4.4, 4, it says, greater is he that is in me. Romans 8.28, it tells us, that all things work it together for us that love God, who are called according to his purpose. That is the language which we have, that everything is working together for my good. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, or Philippians 2, 8, it tells us, <laughs> and he was found in terms of, you can read for yourself, uh, uh, Colossians 3, 1 to 4, it says, we pursue now the things that are higher. Things that are higher. We set our affections on the things above where our life is in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Number two thing as we pray is intentionally we have to press on toward the mark of the upward calling. Moving beyond the cross we have to intentionally press on toward the mark of the upward calling. Tell your neighbor, I'm pressing on. Yeah. One archbishop said, Kuenda Minguni Nimbali, but we are pressing on. <laughs> Amen. Things are coming to push us back, but we have to press on. Amen. Let me ask us a question. Do you always experience prayer life yako yenye iko tu nyue, yani iko nyue kabisa? Ukiamuka hivi, ukianza kusema, Father God, the heavens, yani inafunguka tu malaika wanakuja pale. Wao ndiyo wanakupepeta. Eh? <laughs> ukisema, Father God, let somebody bring me money. Unaona tu pesa yani mtu... <laughs> do you experience such kind of life but we have to press on amen, amen. yeah we have to, it's not coming but we have to press on yeah sometimes we come we pray for the service but things doesn't go the way we want but we have to press on we don't give up amen, amen. yeah we pray for somebody to live but they die but we have to press on we lay hands on the sick, but they are not recovering. But we have to press on. We pray for our friends. They are not getting saved. Our family members, they are not getting saved. But we have to press on. We continue doing it. We are not giving up. Tell your neighbor, we are pressing on. 
Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3 from verses 13 to 14. Paul says, I'm pressing on. I have not attained it, but I'm pressing on toward the mark of the high calling. So brethren, we have to press on. Then the last thing, number three. So moving beyond the cross, allow God to use your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Allow God to use your life. Every one of us, please, brethren, it is not for the first bench people that God wants to use. God wants to use that brother who is behind there. He wants to use that sister that is behind there. And those who are in the middle. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He wants to use us, but we have to yield to him. Life beyond the cross is a life of yielding to God. We yield to God. We say, Lord, I'm here. Use me. Use me in my family. Use me at my workplace. Use me in my church. Use me wherever you want to use me. Praise the Lord. So you subject yourself in total surrender to him to use you. And now you begin to say, as the Lord Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 4 verses 18, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Because the Lord God, he anoints, he has actually anointed every one of us. So you begin in yourself to say, the Lord God has anointed me. And he has anointed me to preach. He has anointed me to heal. He has anointed me to proclaim liberty. He has anointed me to recover the sight of the blind. He has anointed me to set liberty those who are oppressed of the devil. And he has anointed me to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brethren, God is calling us to live that life. So I want you to bow your head as we pray. And ask the Lord. Tell the Lord, Lord, I am here. I want to live that life that you want me to live. A life that pleases you. A life beyond the cross. A life, the life, the resurrection life. In the name of Jesus. Come on, just raise your voice as you pray for yourself. Father God, we are praying for ourselves. We are asking you, Lord Jesus. We need the resurrection life, the spirit of life, the spirit that resurrected the Lord Jesus Christ to be actively at work in our lives, actively at work in us, actively at work through us. We want, oh God, we need that life. We need that spirit to be actively at work, oh God, in our midst, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that we move on in the power of the Holy Spirit. We be doing your work wherever we are. We live a life that is pleasing to you, a life that brings glory to you, in the name of Jesus. For Lord, you have called us up to be a people of power. You have called us, oh God, a royal priest. You have called us a holy nation. You have called us a peculiar people. Therefore, Lord, we pray for ourselves. We shake off anything that has held us back. We shake it off today. In the name of Jesus, we shake off a life of defeat. We shake off a life of failure. We shake off a life, of oh God, of insignificant. We shake off anything that is not pleasing. Today, oh God, we shake it off in the name of Jesus. Any laziness, any prayerlessness, we shake it off. Any slackness to the things of God, we shake it off in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we realize that we are soldiers. We are soldiers of the cross. Soldiers which you've recruited in your army, oh God, to advance your kingdom. We pick off, oh God, that mandal in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. La saya canto lobo. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Maybe you are here. 
you are not born again you are still on this other side of the cross we want to pray with you so that you get saved i want you to raise your hand wherever you are so that we pray together in the name of jesus you can't experience life beyond the cross if you have if you haven't surrendered at the cross if you are there come on raise your hand as we pray together in the name of jesus thank you jesus maybe you are backslidden and you want to be prayed back into the kingdom come on raise your hand wherever you are in the name of jesus father god we ask you fill us again with your spirit that he may move us into oh god your things that he may move us in your power beyond any of our limitations we give you thanks and we give you praise in jesus name somebody raise your voice and give a praise to jesus